human calculator. And I'd like to welcome you to a whole new type of program that really makes math fun. All I'm going to do today is show you different ways to look at numbers, hopefully to make math easier for you so that you can use numbers in everyday life a little bit more and a little bit better. Now, before we get started, I'd like to explain to you how to use the program. You're going to receive in your program of Mega Math a video, four audio cassettes, along with a workbook. What I'd like you to do now is take out your workbook and open it up to the addition section of the workbook. Now, we're going to go through in this video addition, subtraction, and multiplication. All kinds of different ways to make numbers easier, and I'll show you some neat shortcuts and tricks so that you can actually do some of this stuff in your head. Or if you have to do it on paper, you'll be able to do it without actually writing everything down and carry everything, and it'll be a lot easier for you. The rest of the program will include fractions and decimals, percentages, nine easy steps to algebra, a little bit of taxes and tipping and how to make change and perpetual calendars, all kinds of things that you'll be able to use in everyday life. But the first thing I want you to do is really take the time to practice your addition, subtraction, and multiplication because this is the basis or foundation that you'll use to get through the rest of the program and make it much easier for you. Let's start off with addition. Addition is used in everyday life all the time, and I think it's the most simplest thing to learn. So let's take the time now to teach you how to add from left to right. It's actually opposite of the way you were taught in school. All right, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Let's start out with 14 plus 15. Now, the basic way that you learn how to add, you always start on the right and you add them up and then you go over here and you add them up and you're surprised you get an answer. I'm going to show you how to go left to right, backwards, and it eliminates carrying and you'll see how that works in a minute. But first off, let's start right here. This one right there is in the tens column, so that stands for 10. And this is also in the tens column, so that stands for 10. So what I do is I start adding left to right, going down the columns this way. So what's 10 plus 10? The answer is 20. And then you just go up here to the first number in the next column. So 20 plus 4 would give you 24, plus 5 would give you an answer of 29. And simply enough, that's the answer, 29. All you have to do is read it left to right and keep a running total. It's called a base number. Let's try another one. How about 23 plus 13? Now the first thing we do is we start on the left. Now this is in the tens column, this two. So that means two tens or 20. And then down here, this one stands for 10. So what's 20 plus 10? 20 plus 10 is 30. And then you go to the next column. 30 plus 3 would give you 33 plus Three more would give you 36, and that's the answer. Let's try one more. How about 42 plus 25? Now, a little bit bigger. First thing we do is we come up here to the top left corner. There's a four there. Stands for four tens or 40. This two stands for two tens or 20. So let's add those together first. What's 40 plus 20? The answer is 60. And now we just go to the next column. 60 plus 2 is 62, plus 5 is 67. And that's the answer. So you can see how it works. All you do is you start on the left, going to the right, keeping a running total out loud, sort of, in your head. All right? So let's try some more numbers. But this time, I'm going to show you how to carry. When you carry numbers, it really doesn't matter how you do it because there's no such thing as carrying when you go left to right. Let me give you an example. 24 plus 17. Now, we start on the left again. Let's go here. This 2 stands for 20. This is 10. So what's 20 plus 10? 30. And then we come up here to this column. What's 30 plus 4? 34 plus 7. 
So now some of you use your fingers, some of you might break it down to six and one, but 34 plus seven equals 41. So the answer is 41. No carrying. You just go from the 30s to the 40s just by adding to your base number. Let's try another one. How about 28 plus 14? Starting on the left, this is 20, this is 10. What's 20 plus 10? The answer is 30. And then we go up to the next column. What's 30 plus 8? The answer is 38 plus 4 more. 38 plus 4, what's that? You should get 42. So the answer is 42. As you can see, you don't carry. You just keep adding to that base number. It just takes a little bit of practice. So I want to give you one more example before we get into even bigger numbers. How about 39 plus 13? Starting on the left, 30 plus 10 would give you 40. And then up to the next column, what's 40 plus 9? 49. And then we add the 3. What's 49 plus 3? You should get 52. So as you can see, you never carry. You always know what the answer is going to be about right away because you're working with the most significant numbers first, the tens instead of the ones. And what really is the biggest advantage to learning how to add left to right is the fact that you're understanding how tens and ones work together and how they add together without carrying. So I'd like to give you one more example, but this time, let's try a bunch of two-digit numbers and add them up in a column-like form. For example, 24, uh, 15, 31, and 17. A lot of numbers. We're going to go left to right, down the columns, okay? So this 2 right here stands for what? That stands for 20. This 1 stands for 10. So what's 20 plus 10? You should get 30. And then we add the next number, which is 3 or 30 more. What's 30 plus 30? You should get 60. And then the next number is a 10. So what's 60 plus 10? You should get 70. And now we come up to the next column. What's 70? plus 4. 74. Add 5 more. What do you get? 79. Add 1 more. 79 plus 1, which give you 80. And then 7 more is 87. So the answer to 24 plus 15 plus 31 plus 17 is 87. And all you did was keep a running total in your head, left to right, and you never have to carry. It totally eliminates carrying. So what I want you to do now is go into your workbook, and you'll see a whole list of examples, and I want you to practice this technique, this left to right addition with two digit numbers. Make sure that you understand how to go down the columns left to right, and you understand that there's no carrying, and work on practicing keeping your base number and continually adding to that to get to the answer. Good luck. All right, you just finished two-digit edition in the workbook and hopefully understood it very well and you can just fly through those now. If you're still having a little bit of trouble with it or it's just not making sense to you, practice a little bit more, go back into the workbook, read through it again and try the exercises one more time just to make sure you're really sure that you understand it. But if you already have done that and you really feel confident, let's move on to three-digit edition. A little bit uh, tougher, but it's not really once you get into it. I'm going to show you some shortcuts, how to group a little bit, make it a lot easier. So let's start out with an easy example. How about 243 plus 125? Now, same concept. We're going to go left to right, except this time, instead of starting at the tens column, there's another column out here. That's called the hundreds column. When there's three digits, you have the hundreds, tens, ones. So we're going to go all the way out to the left. This is the hundreds. That 2 right there just stands for 200. And underneath it is a 1, which stands for 100. 
So now add those up. What's 200 plus 100? You should get 300. And then we go up to the next column. This is the tens column. So that four just means 40. So what's 300 plus 40? The answer is 340. And then we add 20 more. And you should get 340 plus 20 is 360. And then we just go to the next column. What's 360 plus 3? The answer is 363. And then 5 more because these are the ones column. So what's 363 plus 5? You should get 368. And that's the right answer. So you see how easy it is. It's the same concept as two-digit addition. Just remember, when there's three digits, you're working with the hundreds first, then the tens, and then the ones. Let's give it, let's give it another shot. I'm going to give you a little bit harder. Let's do a 256 plus uh, 213. Now, same idea, left to right, but you're starting with the hundreds, remember. So what's 200 plus 200? That should be 400. And now you move up to the next column. What's 400 plus 50? 450. And then add 10 more. You'll get 460. And then you just go to the next column. What's 460 plus 6? 466. And then add three more. 469 is the correct answer. That's what you should get. Now, you might be noticing now that it's hard for you to remember the base number as you're going through the examples. Here's what you do. You're always saying it to yourself to keep remembering it. That's all I do is I'm going 200, 400, 450, 460, 466, 469. Always say the whole number every time. Just don't go 400, okay, that's 50, 60, 60. That's going to mess you up and you're going to forget what you had over here. All right, so let's try another one. How about 352 plus 145? Left to right, starting with the hundreds, 300 plus 100 gives you 400. Plus 50, 400 plus 50 should give you 450. Add 40 more. What's 450 plus 40? 490. And then just go up to the ones column. What's 490 plus 2? 492 plus 5 should give you 497. It's that simple. And if you continue to practice left to right, adding to that base number, it'll start to make sense to your brain and it will be easier to remember the numbers as you're going through it, just by repeating it over and over again as you add to that base number. Now, what happens if you have to carry? Let's try three-digit numbers with a little bit of a carry just to see how you do. And remember, you don't really carry, you just keep adding to that base. So let's try 147 plus 124. Starting from the left, obviously, this is 100, this is 100. What's 100 plus 100? you'll get 200. Then you go to the tens. This 4 right here stands for 40. So what's 200 plus 40? 240. Add 20 more and you'll get 260. Then we go to the ones. What's 260 plus 7? You'll get 267. And then we've got to add 4 more. What's 267 plus 4? The answer is 271. See again how you don't even carry. You just keep adding to that base number. And I have to keep reminding you, always say the whole base number. Don't just say the tens or the hundreds alone. Say the whole thing every time. Let's try another one. What's 256 plus 125? Starting on the left, 200 plus 100. How much is that? 300. Up to the 50, what's 300 plus 50? 350. Add 20 more. 370. And then we go to the ones. What's 370 plus 6? 376. And now we add 5 more. What's 376 plus 5? You should get 381. All right, and now I just want to try one more example 
a little bit harder, 249 plus 132. Left to right, starting with the hundreds, keeping a running total, saying the whole number every time. 200 plus 100 will give you 300. And then we go to the tens. That's a 40, right? So what's 300 plus 40? 340. Add 30 more. What do you get? 340 plus 30. You should get 370. And then we go to the next column. What's 370 plus 9? 379. And then add 2 more. What's 379 plus 2? The answer is 381. Hopefully by now you're starting to see how it works where you just keep that running total, keep that base number, and just keep adding to it. And as we get into bigger numbers, you'll see how much more effective this is because you don't carry no matter how large the numbers get. So what I want to do now, before you go into the workbook to complete this part of the program, I want to give you one more example with a column of three-digit numbers. I just want you to give it a try. And you'll still see there's no carrying. It all just has to do with keeping that base number going. Let's try uh, my favorite example, 123, 216, 121, and 214. I always use this example because it's easy to learn how to carry with a column of numbers. Instead of starting over here, now because I want you to realize something too. If you start over here, now as you've been doing it left to right, watch what happens when you go right to left. 3 and 6 is 9, 10, 14, right down to 4, carry a 1, and then you add up 3, 4, 6, 7, and then you add up 1, 3, 4. You have no idea what the answer is going to be until the very end. Notice how easy it is when you're left to right, you knew right away this is 600, 600 something, it's going to be maybe six or 700, but right away you had a good estimation of the answer. That's one of the keys of adding left to right. So let's try this. This is the hundreds column, that's a 100. This is a 200. Get your running total base number going. What's 100 and 200? 300. Add another 100 and you'll get 400. 200 more will give you 600. Now we go up to the tens column. That's a 20 right there. That's a 10, that's a 20, that's a 10. Right? So what's 600 plus 20? 620. Add 10 more. You should get 630. How about 20 more? You should have 650. And then 10 more will give you a total of 660 so far. Now you've got 660 and you go up to the ones. Now go slow through this. 660 plus 3 is how much? 663. Add 6 more. You should get 669. All right? And now we've got to add one more. What's 669 plus 1? 670. And then 4 more. 670 plus 4 will give you 674. That's the answer to 123 plus 216 plus 121, plus 214. And remember, you never carried. Just give this a little bit of practice. Go back into your workbook. Go through all the examples. Make sure you get them all right, and make sure you understand how you're carrying the numbers without carrying. You're just adding to that base number. And practice remembering that base number. That's the hardest part, but it's really easy once you get into it. Subtraction does not exist. I'm trying to teach you how to do shortcut math, and the first thing I want you to realize is that subtraction is really difficult to learn. It doesn't make sense to our brain. So what I introduce to people when I teach them how to do subtraction is I teach them reverse addition. Let me give you an example. If I said to you, 15 minus 6, instead of looking at that as a subtraction problem, I always look at it backwards upside down. What plus this will give me this? Because in all subtraction problems, this number plus this number always add up to the top number. So I always look at it a little backwards. So instead of borrowing from the one or anything like that, I just say, okay, 15 minus 6. Well, they're saying to me, 6 
plus what equals 15? And then I know 6 plus 9 is 15. Same thing if I said 24 minus 19. Now, you could do it and look at it this way, the regular subtraction way, and say, well, 20 minus 10 is 10. And then, oops, i got to borrow. So before you get into that, just read the problem and turn it around. So instead of saying 24 minus 19, why not say 19 plus what equals 24? And then you know right away, just five more. So the answer is five. Instead of borrowing and all that stuff, if the numbers aren't that big, try to reverse the problem and do it upside down. Let me give you one more example. How about 32 minus 18? Now, a little bit farther apart. And the number here is still bigger than this number. All right, so before you get into going 32, borrow, because this 2 is too small for this, look at it this way. 18 plus what equals 32? 18 plus what equals 32? And if you're pretty good with numbers, or if you're good at adding, because we just did a whole chapter on addition, you should get the answer of 14. What I'm going to show you in subtraction, though, is how to actually go left to right doing subtraction. So open up your workbooks to the subtraction section, and let's go through that together. Let's get into left to right subtraction. Now, it's the same concept as left to right addition, except it gets a little tricky when you've got to sort of get into a borrow situation. So we'll go through it real slow and make sure you understand each step along the way. Let me give you some examples. The first thing I'm going to do is some basic subtraction left to right without any borrowing. Let's try uh, 26 minus 14. This is a whole different way of looking at subtraction because you're using the whole number instead of just learning how to subtract digits and borrow. This will teach you how to look at the whole problem. 26 minus 14. Let's start over here. That obviously is 20, and this is 10. So what's 20 minus 10? 10. And then you go to the right column. What's 6 minus 4? 2. So the answer is 12. 10 and 2 is 12. Let's try another one. 38 minus 27. Starting on the left, what's 30 minus 20? 10. And then what's 8 minus 7? 1. So we have 10 and 1, or 11. You always keep the running total in your head, again, but you just do it one step at a time and make sure you understand the whole problem. Don't try to just read it one line at a time. Understand you're doing the whole problem at the same time in your head. Let's try one more. What's 45 minus 33? Now, starting on the left, what's 40 minus 30? Once again, we get 10. And then 5 minus 3 is 2 to give us an answer of 12. Pretty simple. The best thing about going left to right, though, in subtraction is that right away you knew, you knew the answer was going to be about 10 or 15 maybe, but you knew right away what it was about to be. Doing it the other way, you just know that it ends in a 2, but you have no idea what's over here. So once again, estimation skills will increase using this technique. Now let's try some with a little bit of a borrowing situation. In this case, let's do uh, 26 minus 17. Pretty big problem. 26 minus 17. To start, you're going to go left to right. What's 20 minus 10? You've got... 10, right? Now, here's where it gets tricky. As soon as you see that this number is bigger or smaller than this number, all right, this is smaller than this number. Whenever the smaller number is on top, that means you have to borrow normally. But what you're going to do is just say, okay, well, I've got a 10 from here, right? So add it to this. Instead of having a 6, you've got 16 minus 7. What's 16 minus 7? You should get 9. And that's the answer. Let me go through another one and try it again. How about 34 minus, oh, I want to make it tough, 19. Okay, just to show you how this works. 30 minus 10 is how much? You should get 20. Now, so we've got a 20. We've got to keep that in our head, the running total, base number. We've got 20. Now come up here. 
you see that this number is smaller than this number, so there's a borrowing situation normally. So we've got 20 over here, right? Just add it to the top number. What's 20 plus 4? You should get 24. And now we just minus this 9. So what's 24 minus 9? The answer is 15. Now, if you have problems subtracting 24 minus 9, there's an easy way to do it. I'm going to just do a little note up here. 24 minus 9, if you get to that situation. If you have trouble with that, make this 9 a 10. It's much easier to subtract, and then just add 1 when you're over. What's 24 minus 10? Well, for a lot of people, that's easier, and you'll get 14. And then just add the 1 that you added to that originally, and you'll end up with the same answer of 15. So always try to figure out which way makes it easier for you to get the right answer. Let's try one more. How about 42 minus 28? All right, starting on the left, what's 40 minus 20? You should get 20, right? That's your running base total number, 20. Now we see that we have to borrow, so just add that to the top. What's 20 plus 2? 22. And now we just minus the 8. What's 22 minus 8? 22 minus 8 will give you 14. So as you can see, all you're going to do when you do left to right subtraction is keep a running total in your head and just add it to the number if there's a borrowing situation that occurs. Go back into your workbook. Try the examples that we've got in the workbook. Go through it. Take your time. Make sure that you understand this process before you go any farther because borrowing is really a, a unique situation, and when you have to do it, if you can go left to right and just keep that running total in your head, you'll have an estimated idea of the answer much easier in your head, and you'll be able to get to the answer much quicker and faster. Give it a try and come right back after you're done. Okay, how'd you do in the workbook section of the two-digit subtraction? I hope you did great. It's a little tricky, but once you get used to it, it's very easy, and you can use it in any situation. If you're still having trouble, please go back and review the second part of this video and the exercises again in the workbook before you go into this part. What I'm going to do now is some three-digit subtraction without borrowing, and then we're going to try one with and see how you do with this. Once you get into three-digit numbers, though, it's a little bit more work to remember the base number you're working with, so you've got to practice that a little bit. All right, let's try some easy stuff first. How about 152 minus 149? Now, you can see easily that they're almost the same. I just want to go through it left to right, though, to make sure you understand what we're doing. What's 100 minus 100? Nothing left. There's a zero there, so you forget all about the hundreds now. What's 50 minus 40? 50 minus 40 should give you 10. So now you got a 10 going on. Here's where you look. There's a little borrowing here. This number's smaller than this. So you've got a 10 going. Let's bring it up to the 2. What's 10 and 2? 12. And now subtract that 9. What's 12 minus 9? 3 is the right answer. So the answer to this is 3. But I just wanted to show you how to keep it going left to right and keep the base numbers. All right, let's try another one. 145 minus 132. Starting on the left, what's 100 minus 100? 0. What's 40 minus 30? 10 is the answer to that. So now we've got a 10 going again. And now look at this. This number is bigger than this number, so you can go ahead and write that down. And what's 5 minus 2? you should get 3. So the answer to 145 minus 132 is 13. All right, let's try one more left to right. How about 256 minus 152? All right, let's go over to the hundreds. What's 200 minus 100? You should get an answer of 100. And now come over here. What's 50 minus 50? Zero. So all you've got left so far is the 100 that we had. So let's go to the ones. What's 6 
minus 2? The answer is 4. So the, answer, the total answer would be 104. And, if, and this is the cool part about subtraction, is do it reverse, and you'll see how easy it is to add. Remember how we add left to right? Go upside down adding. What's 100 and 100? 200. What's 0 plus 5? Five. 5. And what's 4 plus 2? 6. Always works. If you get the right answer here, you should be able to go backwards and get the same answer up on the top. Now, let me try one more with you that's going to bring you a little bit of borrowing, but I want you to go through it slow because we're going to do a bunch of it. Let's do a 356 minus 249. Now, let's start on the left. What's 300 minus 200? We have 100 going. That's our base number. What's 50 minus 40? You should get 10. So now we've got 110 so far. But here we go. This is smaller than this. So let's bring that 110 into the picture. Add it to the 6. So now you have 116 minus the 9. And if you've got a minus 9, it's easier to minus 10 and add 1. So what's 116 minus 9? We'll do the 116 minus 10, and you get 106. And then add the 1 back, and you'll get 1. Oh, 07. So let's look at it the other way. 100 and 200 is 300. 0 and 4 is not 5, but you can see here that you're going to carry 1. So what's 7 and 9? 16. There's your 6 and you're carrying the 1. So now this is 1 and 4 is 5. So it'll add up backwards, but when you carry, when you have to borrow going left to right, just remember to keep that base number in your head and then add it whenever you need to to the number as long as it's smaller than the number on the bottom. Try one more. 423 minus 369. All right, let's give it a shot. What's 100 minus, or 400 minus 300? You get 100. Now, look at this. This is smaller than this, 20 and 60. So this one's smaller, so we've got to bring that 100 in. So now 120 minus 60 is how much? 120 minus 60 will give you 60. Now we go to the next column. Look at this. Here we go again. This is smaller than this. But we've got 60 going, right? So what's 60 plus 3? 63 minus the 9. Remember to minus 10, add 1. What's 63 minus 10? Just go down to 53. And then add the one back, and you'll get 54. And if you do the reverse adding, you'll see that you'll get the right answer again. So now go into your workbooks and work on three-digit subtraction and get used to adding that base number whenever you have to carry or borrow and see how you do with that. Take your time. Make sure you understand it before you go on to the next section. Have a lot of fun. All right, now before we move on to the next chapter, let's review a little bit about what we learned in the addition chapter, just to make sure we've got that technique in our head, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of examples to try. First off, let's do 245 plus 124. Remember, we started on the left. We did 200 plus 100, and that gives us 300. And then we go to the next column. That 4 is 4 tens or 40. So what's 300? plus 40, 340. Add 20 more to that. You should get 360. And then the next column, 360 plus 5 is 365. And add 4 more, and that will give us an answer of 369. All right, now let's try another one, but just a little bit bigger with a few more numbers in it. How about uh, 215, 134, and 325. Same concept, left to right, just a few more numbers to put in that base number as we go down the columns. Starting at 200 and adding 100, you would get 300. Add 300 more, and you'll have 600. 
Now we go to the tens column. So that's 10 right there. What's 600 plus 10? 610. Add 30 more and we'll get 640. And then add 20 to that. So what's 640 plus 20? You should get 660. And now we're going to go to the ones. What's 660 plus 5? 665. Add the 4 and we'll get 669 and then add five more, and you'll get 674. Now just a little tip that hopefully you'll be able to use and learn on your own as you get through this program. If you remember 200, 300, 600, 610, 640, 660. Now, look over at the ones columns. We're at 660, right? Isn't five and 510? So instead of going 660, 665, like that, 660, Notice groupings of tens and add them right to the base number. So instead of the way we did it, you could go 660, 670, 674. Same answer, just a little bit quicker, and you'll find yourself doing that as you progress and practice this more and more. Let's try one more. How about um, 453, 217, 321, and 218? All right, starting left to right. 400 plus 200 will give us 600. Add 300 more and we get 900. Add 200 more. What's 900 plus 200? You should get 1100, 1100. So now we've got a big number in our head, 1100. Let's go up to the next column. That's a 50. What's 1100 plus 50? 1150. 10 more is 1160. 20 more is 1180, and 10 more is 1190. And then we go to the next column. Look at this. Here's a 10. What's 1190 plus 10? Some people are going to say 2,000 right away, but it's actually 1,200. 1190 plus 10 is, is 1,200, okay? And then we come down here. What's 1,200 plus 1 is 1,201 plus 8 more is 1209. The answer is 1209. So now go back through the workbook and review addition and subtraction. Make sure you understand them and are really confident because coming up next, multiplication. Multiplication, my personal favorite. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to multiply, and all I want you to do is try each one out and see which technique makes the most sense to your brain. The first one I'm going to teach you is called right to left cross multiplication. Sounds pretty difficult, but it's very simple, and all you do is actually write down the answer. You eliminate all the stuff in the middle that you usually do, and I'll show you how you used to do it and how you're going to do it, just to try it, okay? Easy example first is... 14 times 12. Now, as I'm sure most people watching this have learned how to do, to multiply these two numbers together, you normally do 4 times 2 is 8, and then you do 1 times 2 is 2, and you put your little 0 down there, and then 1 times 4 is 4, and then 1 times 1 is 1, and then you got to add them all up, you get 8, 6, 1, and you get the answer. Using this technique, it takes you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps, and that's without even a carry involved. Eight steps. I'm going to show you how to do it in three. Very easy. All I want you to do is write down the same problem, 14 times 12. Three steps. Here's the three steps. You do the right side, you do a cross, multiply, and add, and then you do the left side. We'll go through it slow. Make sure you understand it. First step is the right side. Just multiply the two numbers on the right. What's four times two? Eight. There's your first digit in the answer. All right? The second step is we're going to cross multiply. When I say cross multiply, I mean multiply these two numbers, multiply these two numbers, and then add them together. So what's two times one? Two. And what's one times four? Four. So add them together. What's two plus four? You'll get six. That's your second digit in the answer. Now to get the left digit, just multiply the two numbers on the left. 
What's one times one? One. Same answer, three steps, all of this is gone. You've already done it in your head along the way. It makes it much easier, much clearer, and a lot of people that I meet have trouble with multiplication usually don't write that neatly and they end up adding up the columns incorrectly. That's where a lot of people make mistakes. So this clears that right up. Let's try a couple more examples because it's very simple to do and no matter how big the numbers get, all you do is write down the answer because as big as it can get is nine times nine. So as long as you have your multiplication tables memorized, you're in good shape. Let's try uh, uh, 24 times 12. Another pretty easy problem, but I just want to show you how the technique works. Let's try the right side first. Remember, three steps. First step is the right side. What's 4 times 2? 8. There's the first digit in the answer. To get the second digit in the answer, all you have to do is cross multiply and add them together. What's 2 times 2? 4. What's 4 times 1? 4 more. So add them together. What's 4 plus 4? 8. There's your second digit in the answer. Now to get the last digit, the left digit, just multiply the two numbers on the left. What's 2 times 1? 2. So your answer to 24 times 12 is 288. All right? Now, if you have to carry, in which, in which case you will, using right to left cross multiplication, all you have to remember is that you carry it to the next step. All right? Let's try this. 24 times 13. Three steps. First step is the right side. What's the right side? Four times three. What do you get? Twelve. Here's what you do. You write down the two from the twelve, and you carry one. Where do you carry it? To the next step. So all I do is put a little one up in the top left corner, all right? Because the second step is the cross multiply and then add, right? So just hang on to that for a second. Let's do the cross multiply. What's two times three? Six. What's four times one? Four. So let's add them together. What's six plus four? Ten. That's our second step. But remember, we carried. So let's add that one. What's ten plus one? We just get 11. So I'm going to write down 1, and once again I have to carry another 1. So I put it over here. And now I've got to do the third step, which is the left side. What's 2 times 1? 2. And then we've got to add the 1 we carried. So what's 2 plus 1 is 3. So the answer is 312. It's that simple. As hard as it gets is you have to remember to carry it to the next step if you have to carry it all. Let's try another one. How about... 36 times 24. All right, three steps. First step, right side. What's 6 times 4? 24. Write down the 4, carry the 2. We're going to carry 2 to the next step. The next step is the cross, multiply, and add. Let's cross multiply. What's 6 times 2? 12. What's 4 times 3? 12. So now add them together. What's 12 plus 12? You should get 24. And now we add that 2 that we carried. So what's 24 plus 2? 26. Write down the 6, and we carry 2. Let's carry the 2 over here. Now what's the last step? The left side. What's 3 times 2? 6. Add the 2 that we carried, and you get 8. And that's the answer. The answer to 36 times 24 is 864. It's that simple. Let's just try one more. How about 45 times 23? Three steps, first step, right side. What's 5 times 3? 15. I'm going to write down the 5, and what do I carry? The 1. I'm going to carry the 1 to the next step, which is the cross, multiply, and add. Let's cross multiply. What's 5 times 2? 10. What's 4 times 3? 12. So add them together. What's 10 plus 12? Now you're good at adding, so you should have got 22. Add the 1 we carried, and that'll give you 23. I'm going to write down the 3, and what am I going to carry to the next step? 2. And now all I do is the left side. What's 4 times 2? 8. Add the 2, and you get 10. 1,035. So the answer to 45 times 23 is 1,035. Look how neat that comes out. You're still carrying, but basically you're learning how to work with ones, tens, and then hundreds by multiplying those groups together one step at a time. Now go to your workbook 
and take the time to go through all the exercises and really make sure you understand this technique because it's my favorite, it's the easiest one, and it works no matter what the numbers are. All right, so give it a try and we'll be right back. I'm sure that that section was easy for you because right to left just makes so much sense and you get the answer right every time. All you got to do is know your multiplication tables and the three basic steps to getting the right answer. So I hope you really enjoyed uh, right to left cross multiplication. But now I want you to try left to right cross multiplication. Same concept, just a little bit backwards. All right, let me give it a try. Let's start out with the same example I used in the previous section. 14 times 12. Now, this technique is usually for people who are pretty good with numbers and like to work with numbers. But give it a shot and see how you do. Instead of starting on the right here, still a three-step process, but we're going to go backwards. We're going to start on the left. All right? So now, here's the tricky part about left to right is you've got to know what every single number stands for. That is a 10, that's a 10, that's a 2, and that's a 4, all right? Knowing that, three steps, but we're going to do the left side first, and we're going to keep a running total. So now we do the left side. What's 10 times 10? 100. You write down the 100. This is just to keep a running total for you. You really don't need to do this, but just to show you how it works. Next step is the cross multiply and add. What's 10 times 2? 20, right? Add that to your base number. So what's 100 plus 20? 120. Now the next step is the other cross. What's 10 times 4? 40. Add that to your 120 and what do you get? 160. And now the right side. Just multiply the numbers on the right. What's 4 times 2? 8. Add it to your 160 and there's 168 again. Same technique, except this time you got to keep a little bit of a running total in your head if you want to. You can do it on paper, but it's really easy to learn how to do and keep it in your head. Let's try another one. Same example we used earlier, 24 times 12. First thing we do is we identify the numbers. That's 20, that's 10, that's 2, and that's 4. Got to know what each one stands for. Now, the first step is the left side. What's 20 times 10? 20 times 10. And I'm sure everybody knows the shortcut to multiplying times 10. You just add a zero to the other number. So if we got 20 times 10, just add another zero to 20, and you should get 200. So we already have 200. Now we have to do the second step, which is the cross multiply. What's 20 times 2? 20 times 2 is 40. So we add that to our 200, and we get 240. Now we cross multiply the other way. What's 10 times 4? 40. What's 240 plus 40 more? You should get 280. And now the last step is the right side. What's 4 times 2? 8. So the answer is 288. This is a really simple technique, but again, it's for people who feel more comfortable with numbers. So hopefully you've given this a try. And what I'd like you to do now is go back into the workbook and go through the examples I put in there because if you practice this for a little bit, just five or six examples, you'll really see how easy this is and it's really not that hard. You just got to practice keeping that running total, that base number. That's the hardest part, but I'm sure you can do it. Now let's try complementary multiplication. This is more of a little gimmicky multiplication. It sort of gives you an advantage if the numbers are around 100 or 50 or 200 or 1,000. But I just want to show you how it works because it's really fun and it makes a lot of sense to people and it can be used for a great shortcut. All right, so let's try the first one. Uh, numbers around 100 are real easy. Let's say you came up with a problem of 96 times 94. Now we could use the way you'd learn how to multiply in school, or we could use 
right to left cross multiplication to get the answer, or we could use left to right cross multiplication to get the answer. But even easier, and that's what I always do, is whatever numbers you give me to multiply, I always try to pick the strategy that's easiest and most efficient for that problem. So in this case, I would use complementary multiplication. Here's how it works. These are both relatively close to 100. So what I'm going to do is look at how far 96 away is from 100. How far away from 100 is 96? 4. So let's put a 4 over here to the right. Now, how far away is 94 from 100? 6. So let's put a little 6 over here. That's all you have to do. Now, here's how you figure out what 96 times 94 is. Remember, that's the goal. All you do is you subtract diagonally. That's the first step. What's 96 minus 6? The answer is 90. And that's the first two digits in the answer, to 96 times 94. Now, to get the second part of the answer, all you have to do is multiply these two numbers on the right. What's 4 times 6? 24. Put that right there, and that's the answer. So the answer to 96 times 94 is 9,024. It's that simple. And look, what's really neat about this is that you could subtract 96 minus 6, or you could subtract the other way. What's 94 minus 4? 90. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. And then all you do is multiply the two numbers on the right, and that's it. Let's try another one. How about 97 times 95? First thing we do is we say, okay, how far away are those numbers from 100? Well, 97 is 3 away from 100. And 95 is 5 away from 100. So now all we have to do is subtract diagonally either way. What's 95 minus 3, or what's 97 minus 5? Whichever one's easier for you, you should use. In this case, I think 95 minus 3 is easier. So 95 minus 3 gives me 92. There's the first two digits in the answer. To get this, what do we do? Multiply the two numbers on the right. What's 3 times 5? 15. So the answer to 97 times 95 is 9,215. That's it. It's that easy. Let's try another one. But now, remember, when we were under 100, we subtract the diagonally. So what do you think would happen if we had two numbers that were close to 100, but they were both over 100? Let's do 107 times 105. Same concept. Except this time, the numbers are over 100 instead of under 100. So when we were under 100, we subtract a diagonally. In this case, we're going to add because it's over 100. So how far over 100 is 107? 7. And then how far over 100 is 105? 5. So now we've got the problem set up, and let's go through it. First thing we do is we add diagonally either way. What's 107 plus 5? or 105 plus 7. Either way, you should get 112. And that's the first three digits in the answer. Now, to get the last part of the answer, just multiply the numbers on the right. What's 7 times 5? 35. So the answer is 11,235. Now, in the workbook, you're going to see where there's different examples that we do around 50, around 200, around 1,000. I want you to try them all. If you have any trouble with this technique, Go back to another technique and get the right answer, and then sort of make it like a puzzle. Let me give you an example. If I said to you 196 times 194, all right, now where do you think we should go from? Obviously, these are both close to 200, so we're going to go from 200. How far away is that from 200? 196 is 4 away. 194 is 6 away. So they're both below 200, so we have to subtract first. What's 196 minus 6 or 194 minus 4? Either way you do it, it's going to come up to be 190. Now, you can write that down, but you shouldn't because you've got to realize when we're working from 100, you don't touch it. But when you're working from a different 100, you multiply it times that amount of hundreds. So we're working from two hundreds here. So after you do the subtraction either way or addition, then you have to multiply it times 2 because we're working with 200. So we came up with 190, so we got to double that, times 2. What's 190 times 2? The answer is 380. And that's the first part of the answer to this equation. Now, 
To get the last part, simply multiply the numbers on the right. What's 6 times 4? 24. And if you check your math, you'll see that 186 times 194 is 38,024. During the exercises, if you have trouble getting to this answer, use a different technique, get the answer, and then go backwards and see how could you get to that answer. Make it a puzzle. That's all I did when I was a kid to learn how to do all these things. And that's all I'm asking you to do is if it's a little bit tough for you, make it a game. I'm sure you'll get through it. Go to the exercises, get through it, make sure you understand this. It's a lot of fun. And next we're going to try something even more fun. Now I'd like to introduce you to box multiplication. This technique is designed just to help people or if your child is having trouble organizing numbers during multiplication, all right? You can pick any size numbers and it works. I'm just going to throw a couple numbers out at random and show you how to set up the box and then it's a very simple technique to always getting the right answer and it, and it does the organization of numbers at the same time. It's really cool how it works. Let's take uh, 32. Well, I'm going to put it over here for you. 32 times 16. All right? Now, instead of doing it any of the ways that I've shown you so far in this program, I'm going to set up a little box here. And the box is going to be split up into 2 by 2, like this, because there's two two-digit numbers. If it was two three-digit numbers, you'd extend it out this way and draw a line. Or if it's 4 by 3, whatever, just make the box accordingly. All right? But now, we're doing 32 times 16. What I do is I put the numbers on top and on the side, 32 times 16. Then, draw a line through each box diagonally to cut it in half. And you can see how this cuts in half, and this cuts in half. Now you have a cool looking box, 32 times 16, and all you have to do now is multiply the numbers into the box that they meet at. So let's start right here. What's 2 times 1? The answer is 2. But now where do you put it in the box? Here's how it works. The bottom right is for the ones and this is for the tens. The bottom is for the ones, the top is for the tens. That's all you have to remember. So 2 times 1 is 2, so the 2 is going to go in the bottom of the box. All right. Now the next one is 2 times 6 is 12. So now you've got 2 times 6 is 12, 1 and 2, you draw it like this. 1 goes in the top, 2 goes in the bottom. There's your 12, that's your tens, that's your ones. Next is 3 times 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Top or bottom, where do you think it should go? It should go in the bottom, because it's just the 1's. And the last part is 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. So we draw it into the box 1, 8, 18, 10, and 8. That's it. Now, to get the answer, here's all you have to do. Is just look at the numbers inside the box. Forget these are here now. Just look at the numbers inside the box, and we're going to add them up diagonally, and it'll give you the answer. Right here, all you have is a 2. So you put a little 2 here. Look at between these lines. You have a 2, a 1, and an 8. What's 2 plus 1? 3. Add 8 more. What do you get? 11. You draw 1, and you carry 1 to the next line. Now add these up in this line. You see a 3, a 1, and a 1. What's 3 plus 1 plus 1? 5. There's that. And that's the answer. 512 is the answer to 32 times 16. Now go into your exercise workbook, practice this a couple times with two digit numbers first, then move up to 2 by 3, 3 by 3, as high as you want to go. But every time you'll see that it organizes your numbers and you always get the answer along the bottom. Give it a try. Now we're going to try squaring. Squaring a number just means that you're going to multiply a number times itself. If I said to you 7 squared, that just means 7 times 7, or 49. If I say 9 squared, 9 times 9 would be 81. 
or even 12 squared. 12 times 12 is 144. But most people tend to shut down after that and don't think they can multiply numbers any larger than that. So what I'm going to show you right now is how to square larger numbers very quickly without doing that much multiplication. Let me give you a couple of examples just to show you how it works. Let's start with 96 squared. 96 times 96. The average person can't even guess within a thousand of what that answer is going to be. But using this technique I'm about to show you, you'll be able to figure out the exact answer to this in a matter of seconds. Here's how it works. 96 squared. Just look at 96 and say, okay, how far away is 96 from 100? Well, the answer is 4. So all you do is you put a little minus 4 below it. Now, what's 96 minus 4? The answer is 92. That is the first two digits in the answer, to 96 times 96. Now, to get the last part of the answer, all you do is you go to this middle, the difference it was from 100, and you square that. What's 4 times 4? 4 times 4, not 4 plus 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and you just drop that below the, behind the 92. And that's the answer, 9,216. Let's try another one. How about 91 squared? 91 squared, 91 times 91. Pretty difficult, but using this, it's really easy. How far away is 91 from 100? 9, so I'm going to put a little minus 9 here. And what's 91 minus 9? If you have trouble with that, do 91 minus 10, and then add 1. And either way, you'll come up with 82. That's the first two digits in the answer to 91 times 91. To get the last part, what do we do? You're going to square the number in the middle. What's 9 squared? 9 times 9 is 81. And drop that behind the 82, and your answer is 8,281. Very simple trick. Works all the time. Gets a little trickier the farther you get away from 100 or 1,000 or 50, whatever you're using, but it always works. Now, what if I gave you 106 squared? Now, same concept as complementary multiplication, sort of. This is close to 100. How far over 100 is it? 6. So now, when it was under 100, you see how we subtracted? But when it's over 100, we're going to add. So let's try this. What's 106 plus 6? The answer is 112. And now, to get the last part of the answer, just square that number in the middle. What's 6 times 6? 36. Drop it down to the back, and the answer to 106 times 106 is 11,236. Very simple. Practice this. It's in the uh, workbook. There's a bunch of exercises for it. Make sure you understand it. But before you go into the workbook, I want to show you a couple of certain examples that will help you understand this even better. This is great if it's around 100, but what if it's not around 100? Let's say, for example, the uh, number you want to square is 46. So we're going to do 46 squared. Now, that's not even remotely close to 100. It's very far away, but it's really close to 50. So what we're going to do is go from 50. How far away from 50 is that? 4. So we're going to put a little minus 4 here. Now, what's 46 minus 4? 42. But here's where the trick comes in. We're going from 50 now. We're not going from 100. Isn't 50 half of 100? So when you get to this number here, you've got to cut it in half. That's the only trick. So what's half of 42? You can just look at it and figure it out. What's half of 4? 2. What's half of 2? 1. So now you got 21. That's the first two digits in the answer to 46 times 46. And now to get the rest of the answer, just square the number in the middle. What's 4 times 4? 16. You bring it right down behind the 21, and there's your answer, 2,116. Works for all kinds of numbers. What if I gave you 988 squared? Obviously, it's not even close to 100, but it is really close to 1,000, isn't it? How far away from 1,000 is 988? The answer is 12. So I'm going to put a little minus 12 here. What's 988 minus 12? The answer is, and you go left to right, of course, is 976. That's the first three digits in the answer. Now to get the last part, just square that number in the middle. What's 12 times 12? 144. So the answer to 988 times 988 is 976,144. So now go to your workbook. And there's all kinds of tricks and easier ways to square numbers. So I want you to practice different types of numbers from 50, around 100, maybe 200, even up to 1,000. 
and make sure you understand if it's below 100 or below the number you're using, you subtract, and if it's above, you add. Give it a shot and come right back. I want to teach you how to square numbers ending in 5. Now let's try squaring numbers that end in 5. It's real easy, it takes two steps and you can square any number that ends in 5. Just got to do a little bit of multiplication and that's it. Let me give you an example. 35 squared. 35 times 35. Real easy to do. All it is is two steps. Whenever this last number is 5, ending in 5, the answer is always going to end in 25. That's a given. It always ends in 25. The hard part is getting the first part of the answer, but it's really quite simple. It's only one step. Just look at the first number here, 3. All you do is add 1, which would give us a 4, and multiply those two numbers together. What's 3 times 4? 12. So the answer to 35 squared is 1225 or 1225. Let's try another one. How about 65 squared? Ends in 5, so what's the answer going to end in? 25. Now, how do we get that first part of the answer? Just add 1 to this first number. What's 1 more than 6? Should get 7. Now, multiply them together. What's 6 times 7? 42. So the answer is 4225 or 4225. Now, try this one on your own first, and then we'll do it together. How about 85 squared? Try it out. How's it do? What's the first thing here? Ends in 5, so it ends in? 25. 1 more than 8 is 9. What's 8 times 9? 72. So the answer is 7225 or 7225. Now, this will even work with bigger numbers. You just got to do a little more multiplication. Let me give you an example. If I said to you 995 squared, 995 squared, 995 times 995 is a really big number. But once again, it ends in 5. So what's the answer going to end in? 25. Now, to get that first part of the answer, whatever's in front of this 5, in this case 99, add 1 to it. What's 1 more than 99? 100. So now what's 99 times 100? Well, all you do is whenever you multiply a number times 100 is add two zeros. So you'd have 9, 9, 0, 0, 2, 5. Always works. But when you get into bigger numbers, you've got to really practice your multiplication again. That goes back to the multiplication chapter. So just for fun, the next time your parents or your friends are around and you want to impress them really fast, just ask them to pick a number that ends in 5 and tell them you'll square it just like that. You'll beat them on the calculator. Now let's just review what we've learned so far in the previous sections, just to make sure your brain's still going and you remember all the little tricks and techniques that we've gone through. Starting out with addition, remember how to add left to right? I'm going to give you a couple of examples and I just want you to give them a shot. 37, 42, 21, and 18. Remember, add left to right. Give it a shot. Okay, now, we should have started on the left. This 3 is 30, because we're only working with two-digit numbers, remember. Here's 40. So let's start a running total, that base number. What's 30 and 40? 70. Add 20 more. 90. And how about 10 more? You're up to 100 already. Now let's go to the next column. What's 100 plus 7? 107. Two more is 109. One more is 110. And eight more will give us 118. You should have got 118. All right? And if you're still having trouble with this, or if you forgot how to do it, please go back to the first section of this program and practice your addition. It's the most important thing you can learn in this program to make sure you can get through the rest of it. Now let's try one more, but this time with three-digit numbers. How about 257, uh, 322, and 214? Go ahead and give it a shot, and then we'll try it together in a second. Okay, let's go through it slow together. OK, 
Okay, starting here at 200, we're working with hundreds first. 200 and 300 will give us 500. Add 200 more, 700. Then we come up to the 50. What's 700 plus 50? 750 plus 20 more is 770. 10 more is 780. And then we go to the ones. What's 780 plus 7? 7? 787. And then two more would give us 789. And then four more would give us 793. So the answer is 700. 93. How'd you do? If you have any troubles, please go back to the addition section. If not, let's try some subtraction. Okay, let's review subtraction now. Just a couple of quick examples to make sure you still remember how to subtract. Start off with uh, 81 minus 68. All right, give it a try. See how you do. Okay, now let's try it together. First, you start over here. What's 80 minus 60? You should have 20. And now you can see that this number is smaller than the number on the bottom. So we're going to have to borrow, sort of. So we bring this 20 up here, makes it 21, right? 21 minus 8 is how much? 21 minus 8. And if you have trouble with that, do 21 minus 10 and add 2. That's the same as subtracting 8. So you should get the answer of... 13. All right, let's try one more, but a little bit bigger now. Let's do 426 minus 219. Okay, starting from the left, what's 400 minus 200? Should get 200. Keep it in your head. Let's go over here. What's 20 minus 10? 10. So, so far we have 210, right? But here we go. We see that this number is smaller than this number, so we have 210. Let's add it to the 6. What's 210 plus 6? Should get 216. Now minus 9. 216 minus 9. Forget all about the 200 for a second because you know the 200 is there. And just do the 16 minus 9. You should get 7. And then bring the 200 back in and you should get the answer of 207. And just to make sure you're right, remember, you can always add backwards and upside down and get the right answer up on the top. So if you had any troubles with subtraction, please go back into the workbook and review that section. If not, good luck with the rest of the program.